On today's Fit to Eat, I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious rabbit cacciatore, three herb vegetable pasta, and a balsamic spring salad. We travel to Sandy Hook, Mississippi to check out the Rabbit Man Farm, and our guest is registered dietitian, Rebecca Turner, and she has some tips on making pancakes healthier. So stay with us. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Today we have Rebecca Turner here to help me out. We're gonna prepare an incredible rabbit cacciatore. Oh, sounds like fun. Yum, yum, yum. All right, so later in the show, they're gonna be going to a rabbit farm. Cool. So I thought today would be the perfect day to actually do a neat rabbit dish. Because it's actually a very lean protein. Most people don't think about rabbit as a protein dish for home. It, it's absolutely true. So here we have the hindquarters. And I don't know if they can get this. Can you guys get a close-up on that just to show? So that would be like its butt? That would be its, its, its rear legs. Rear legs. Yep. And the center is cut out. But this is about the right portion size. Yes. Because in edible meat, it'd be about four to five ounces. Which is great for an average man or woman. Exactly. If you'll hold that for yep. me, what I'm going to do is season it. Just so salt and pepper? Just black pepper. And just on the one side for now, and then we put it in the pan. If you bear with me here, we're gonna put about a half a teaspoon, so not much at all. Now, do rabbits not have the traditional like breast like we think of chicken or turkey? They, no, they eat? do, they do, but those are in high demand. Believe it or not, rabbit is in incredible high demand right mm. now. So that goes, and this would be what people could probably find. Cheaper. Unless they, yeah, and it, a whole lot less expensive. expensive. So anyhow, we're gonna put this with that pepper side down in the pan just to kind of get a sear going on, then we're gonna make the cacciatore sauce right with it. Okay, so this so is kind of a neat. one pot meal? Sorta. It really is, it really is. Little seasoning on the top of those legs. Then we're gonna add in some onion. And I tell you what I may do is just let you kind of throw these as yeah, we go. Yeah, mushrooms. Mushrooms, beautiful fresh mushrooms. Tomatoes. Ooh, pretty color. Nice Valorosa tomatoes, because this is almost an Italian dish by nature, being a cacciatore. And I tell you what, if you like, I see you looking at those. I see. You can, yep, yep. I, I know you know what you're oh. doing over there. Well, let's just not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> so, garlic. All right. I have that certain reputation for garlic, so I figure. A little bit more pepper now that we've got all the other ingredients, and that's about it. So, that was about a teaspoon of pepper altogether. And I tell you what, obviously nobody's going to remember all of the details because there is a lot going on in this dish. So if you're interested in any of the recipes that are on today's show, visit our webpage at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or join our Facebook page, MPB Fit to Eat. All right, now, yellow bell pepper, and it's just pretty and color, it looks so good. And we've got a lot of green, fresh herbs going in. I throw the rosemary, these are fresh chopped Ooh. rosemary. And again, if you don't have fresh, you say use half the quantity and dried, right? Exactly, yeah, and, and some people don't like it because it can be a little bit, you know, kind of chewy to a taste, but fresh is so much better. And it grows everywhere. We've got it growing right here on the set behind us. All right, some thyme. Thyme is a real great flavoring that goes in a cacciatore and with chicken. What does cacciatore mean, other than catch the rabbit? <laughs> hey, you know, honestly, the Italians have so many names for dishes, and I honestly don't know the actual okay. true origin of that dish. Just sounds cool. And it does. It impress your family that well, you can cook it. We're going to throw in some crushed red pepper. Got to spice it up a little bit. And right now, I think it'd be a good time to turn these guys over. And look at that, perfect, perfect oh. crust going on. So as it cooks, the meat gets that lighter color as yep. it goes down? Yep, it sure does. A lot like chicken, right? Yeah, it really is, it really is. I mean, in all honesty, it's almost the same size, too. All right, let's throw in our fresh 
oregano. What's that? Add some oregano. And then we're going to kind of add in our vegetable stock. And right mm. as we do that, this is going to be where you tomato really paste. have to kind of stir it in. Okay. Some pure tomato paste and a little white wine. And we can always add in, don't forget, a little water if we think we need it, just to keep that moist. And water is such a great thing. People never think about adding it to a sauce. But it's such a wonderful way to keep your sauce the right consistency. Without adding in any other oils or exactly. calorie type Yep, exactly. And we've got a little bit more stock I'm going to throw in there. And I tell you what, doesn't it look pretty? It's very pretty. And the aroma is fantastic. Yes, even to be a rabbit. Ah, no. Let's see now. Let's kind of move him around a little bit. And it's, as they're sitting there, uh -huh. I think that's really going to be kind of the, the nature of it is to take it and then baste this. So what I'll do is kind of take some of that sauce up and get it on top. So basting just literally means taking whatever the, the sauce in the pan and covering it. And covering meat. it, yep. And it, it helps get some of the flavor into that dish itself. And I tell you, look at that. Isn't that great? Oh, it and smells good. I love, I love the aroma. I can smell the oregano right now. I smell the oregano more than the, the rosemary. Well, you can definitely smell like what, what a traditional spaghetti sort of sauce sort of smells like. Yeah. With the, makes it Italian, I guess. Yeah, and, and it's just a beautiful flavoring. It really is. So let's take a good look and see. You know, we got a lot of good stuff going on there. Bell peppers, healthy. Onion, healthy. Garlic, healthy. No mushrooms. Salt. A little bit in the vegetable stock, but not enough to account. And actually, no salt. No salt in that stock. Oh, you got oh, salt-free stock. Absolutely. It's right there on the same shelf, so yep. make sure you look. That's, you know, and that's a good point we need to tell people. So often when you're in the store, they don't take the time to look. Right, you just you know, go and grab what yeah, you normally grab. Yeah, and, and they're fat-free options, and they're salt-free options, and man, it makes a big difference. I will say though, in the stock world, the fat-free is not much different than the the whole. I think it's like a gram difference, but the salt-free makes a tremendous difference. Absolutely. So you do want to go for that one. And veggie stock is so easy to make. You can take it, roast your vegetables that you get in a little pack in the store. It costs almost nothing, maybe four dollars for a huge pack. Put them in the oven and roast them. Throw it in a pot and reduce it. You can even simmer it overnight. And boy, when that's done, it's fantastic. I'm sure it is, but it's still easy to buy the salt-free <laughs> <laughs> the salt free version at the store. <laughs> no, it's so true. OK, now, we, uh, we, we have some fun stuff that we're going to do. And I know you know what this is. It's a zoodler. Yeah, and a spiral cutter, or zoodler. Or I mean, it's so neat. And we're going to move into this little later in the show showing how incredibly easy. You will not be able to keep your kids or your spouses out of the kitchen to help you with dinner when you bring in a new tool like this. It's so much fun. And, and they're so reasonably priced. Oh yeah, I mean. I mean, I don't care where you are, you can find them for $10 or less. Mm -hmm. So, you know, makes it really, really easy to use. All right, now this has been simmering pretty well. Let me turn the rabbit over one more time. Now, how do you know when meat on a bone such as this is done without obviously doing the temperature because I think it's what, 165? You want to get it to yeah, internal temperature? Yeah, between one, 155 and 160, 165. That's poultry. And, yeah, and this is really, that's how I would look at this. And that's the one you want to be the most careful about. Look at the sauce though, how beautiful that is. Everything is kind of cooked down the way we want. The easiest way for me to finish this with what we're doing today is to take it now that we've cooked it I love either cast iron pans or a pan like this that you can take and actually put in the oven. Oh, did, so we already happen to have that oven ready. And if you would, let me, what I want to do though, okay. is get all that sauce right up there on top and baste it right before we put it in. Oh, so it, so it cooks together. Exactly. And kind of marinates. And it'll help brown some of those onions and bell pepper right onto it, the uh, rabbit itself. That's a neat little trick. Yeah, and when you go in the oven with it, what's so nice about this is you're not dirtying two pans. Oh, you know I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like cleaning duty in the house or cleaning duty anywhere. Whoever has that is always more conscious of trying to cook in one pan than, than two. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this in the oven. If you'll grab the door. Okay. Bottom oven, please. Putting it right in there. I'm going to leave the handle so it keeps the oven open a little bit. No, what's the purpose for that? I've got it on broil. 
and you don't want it to overcook and when it stays like that some of the heat will come off and it won't get quite as overbearing. We could take that, just turn it on regular and be fine. Be fine. So, anyhow, Rebecca is going to head to the nutrition set where she is going to show us how to make pancakes in a healthier way. So stay with us and let's find out what she's doing next. It is worth repeating. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you aren't starting your day with a morning meal, you are missing out on an opportunity to have more energy, be more focused, and weigh less. A nutritious breakfast doesn't have to be bland or boring. In fact, you can still enjoy pancakes made from scratch without sacrificing your health or taste. Homemade pancakes are so delicious, especially when you can whip them up in just two minutes. But buying a store-bought pancake mix can be expensive and full of ingredients that you might not want to feed your family. Let me show you a homemade pancake mix recipe you can make in a big batch, and then when you are ready and want to make fresh hot pancakes, it will only take you a few minutes to prepare. So we're going to start with four cups of 100% whole wheat flour, and to that we're going to add one cup of white flour. Now you may be wondering why I'm adding white flour to our healthy pancake mix, but it's going to help give it a lighter, airier texture that your kids are already used to when it comes to pancakes. Now here's a secret ingredient. This is one and one fourth cup of dried low fat milk found in the baking section. And this is gonna help you decrease your uh, prep time when you get ready to make your pancake mix. Because you never want to want pancakes and then get to the refrigerator and you're out of milk. So the last ingredients are traditional to any baking recipe. We're gonna do one fourth a cup of sugar. Now remember, this is to this whole big batch. So a fourth a cup of sugar is not that much. An eighth a cup of baking powder. And then one tablespoon of salt. Here's a great time to get your kids in the kitchen and learn measuring and whisking and stirring. They'll have a good time doing this. Now once you get this all nice and mixed together, you're going to want to make sure you have an airtight container to store it in like I have here. That way, whenever you get ready to make hot, fresh pancakes, all you need is a cup and a half of your mix, one cup of water, one egg, and one, uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. You'll mix that together like a normal batter and you'll pour it onto a hot griddle or pan. That will make about six to eight small pancakes. Now get fun with some of the add-ins. You can do berries, chocolate chips, nuts, and diced apples. Today I chose blueberries. Now here's a secret. When mornings are less rushed, typically on the weekends, make more than your family needs and then freeze individual portions to simply pop in the microwave and have a hot homemade breakfast that's fit to eat in no time. Thanks Rebecca, that was great. All right, well, you can see I got a pan hot. Yes. Now we've had this debate, I'm gonna move that off the heat because it's good and hot. We've had this debate about spiral cutting and what the best preparation is. So I've been playing around with this to come up with what I thought was the best way to get flavor in the food and then actually kind of make it like pasta. So that's what we're right. gonna try and do, all right? And let's, let's take some time though, because a lot of people out there have never seen this. Oh, I know, and it's, it's, it can look kind of foreign. All right, the so, idea of it, but so very, it. very simple, zucchini, or squash, we have them both so, in this recipe. So I'm just am gonna take a little bit of time to do, and as we can see that, let's see if we can, there we go. It's just like a vegetable pencil sharpener. It, isn't that great? You know, that's a really neat way to say it, because it really is. And I think that either side will do the zoodles uh, yeah, this is different like, sizes. This is like, almost like linguine size, and the other side is like angel hair side, I found. And I think it holds the better, holds together a little bit better the because you do it a little thicker and maybe some that are firmer. Now you know what else is kind of neat? Watch this. I have fun with this. I'll take this piece when you're done, cut off the tip, slice this, and you can roast that in the oven. And it really is kind of neat, and especially if you put a little bit of any kind of flavoring, spray it with some zero fat and season it with pepper. But anyhow, that's, that's basically the whole idea of this. So very, very simple. 
So let's take a look at what we have. We have yellow squash, we have zucchini, then I took some leeks, just like you see out front, and julienne them so they could be kind of part of this to get an onion flavor into the I dish. I was going to ask, what does the leek offer? Right, and it's, it's a great flavoring of onion. It really is a type of onion. So, and you know what, I got to come back and say, you know, we were, we were really kind of curious. Cacciatore really is like hunter. Yeah. So I guess it's what they catch, and in this case, they caught rabbit. See, I was right. You were, ah. you were. All yeah. right, so again, half a teaspoon of oil. Again, very small amount. And what we're going to do is start off with our leeks, so kind of our onion flavoring. Now, I always see this in the store, and I'm, I'll have to admit, I've never bought one and cooked with it. So uh -huh. do you just peel it like an onion and slice it that way? Yeah, yeah, and, and I tell you, I mean, it's so simple. You know, let's throw this all it's in fun. there. And, and it's a great question, and we can actually take a second, if you'll help me stirring that while we're doing yeah. this. Let's I can put do that. a little bit of pepper again. This is not a real heavily seasoned dish. It's got garlic, it's got the leeks. But, you know, taking a leek is so simple. So while you're doing that, and you know what? We're going to add a little stock to it. No, let's let it brown a little more. Let's let it brown a little bit more. Isn't that, it, yeah. isn't that amazing? It just looks so much fun. I know. All right, anyhow, to, to cut a leek, basically you cut the end off. You can slice it right down the center. And you have that beautiful, oh, look at I that. I never knew that was in there. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> really simple to do. And there's really nothing more to it than either slicing it, chopping it, cooking it long ways like we are. And I didn't realize that it was considered like an onion. It yeah, like in that yeah it really is. Family. And boy, leek soup is fantastic. The flavor. Now I've eaten it. Yeah, I the just flavor is fantastic. It. I love it. So very, very simple to do. All right. We are, yeah, it looks good. Isn't this is neat? easy. Isn't it? See? See, look at that. I, I know. can spiral and I can stir. I can make a dish. <laughs> That's right. And, and it's so much more flavorful than just taking it and soaking it in water like you would pasta. Right. This way, you're actually flavoring it. And all it's in is a hot pan, a tiny bit of oil, pepper, garlic, and the leeks are going to give it a great flavor. Oh, and it's like a third of the calories. Oh, um, oh if that. If, if that. that. Yeah, I know. And, and I mean, think about it this way, too. All those people out there gluten free, mm -hmm. this is perfect. Oh, yes. So this whole recipe, we're really focused on that. You know, I think that's another important part. All right, we're going to add the stock to it, and that is literally it. Watch what happens. Magic. Just spread that out right in there, and it's going to finish cooking it. Let's turn that heat down a little bit. And that can just sit in that pan exactly Simmer. the way it is. Beautiful. All right, now let's talk about this. Down on the farm segment today, we travel to Sandy Hook, Mississippi to check out the Rabbit Man Farm and see how rabbit farming is done. Stay with us. That looks great. About 15 years ago, I was raising rabbits to sell to um, the current processor. And in 2003, he decided that he was going to retire. And I was running about 250 does, so I was producing a fair amount of fryers, and that was going to leave me with no place to sell my fryers. So his solution was for me to become the processor. And looked into it and decided that, yes, we wanted to do that. So we bought his equipment and then built our building here, and I became, I became the woman behind Rabbit Man Farms. The New Zealand Whites are an all-white rabbit with um, red eyes. They are, um, to me, one of the best meat breeds. They are good producers. Um, the Californians are white. The body of them is white, but they have a little black on their ears and their nose and their tail. And they are a little bit smaller than the New Zealand's, but um, I really like those those two breeds. Those are, to me, the best meat breeds out there. I start my day by just coming out here and walking the barns, making sure that everything's okay. Um, if I've got any babies, we check those babies. Uh, we have a day or so a week that we do our breeding, um, get those does bred, and gestation's 31 days, so um, about 28 days, they get a box. Uh, these wooden boxes that we build, we put that in there with them and give them some hay, and. 
They know how to make a nest, so they make a nice nest and usually have their babies in the box. From the time the babies are born, you're looking at eight to 10 weeks before they're actually ready to go to the plant. We are the only processing plant that does rabbit in the south. Um, there's not one in any of the surrounding southern states. We buy rabbits from all over. I mean, we raise rabbits ourselves, but we buy rabbits from the surrounding states and as far away as Tennessee and Florida and Texas. Once um, they get to me, I sort them out according to size. If they are a certain size, then they're used as for whole rabbits. And what we do is we trim the bones um, on the neck and on the, on the legs so that when we put them in those vacuum bags, they're less likely to puncture the vacuum bag. They're trimmed, they're put in the um, bags, they're sealed, and they're boxed to go to whatever customer they're going to. Rabbit meat is the healthiest meat that's out there. It is very low in cholesterol, low sodium, it's easily digested. It, um, you can do pretty much anything with it as far as seasoning. It cooks um, well. It, it's just a really, really good meat source. It's really high protein also. People taste it and they realize what a good healthy meat is it is for them and they go to a restaurant that might serve it and they might not would not have eaten it any other time but once they try it they realize oh this is really good and the market just continues and continues to grow. If you want to learn more about Rabbit Man Farms you can check them out on the web at rabbitmanfarms.com. I thought that's really interesting you know what's else I mean just the fact that there's such a huge demand for them. Well, people are looking for alternatives to protein anyway. People are kind of tired of the pork, chicken, and beef trilogy, and they're just wanting yep. just one morning more flavor. Yeah, and I tell you, the other thing I've noticed is some very high-end restaurants, even down on the coast, are using like rabbit tenderloin, and the price is unbelievable. <laughs> so they're they're doing well. All right, what we're going to do here put our lettuce to the side is make a nice salad. I call it kind of an Italian balsamic salad. We're gonna start off and the very first thing I'm gonna put in is a little So mustard. we're making the uh, dressing first. Yep, put that dressing in, almost like you're doing, kind of like the Caesar idea. Just some garlic mixed in with it. People don't realize how easy it is and affordable to, to make, your, make own your own dressing. Uh, and it's so much better for you. You know, you're not overladen with salt. Obviously a little bit of pepper and we're gonna pepper some as we go. This is just a little touch of the spice, okay? Because there's really nothing in here. What so that's spice? a little bit of cayenne pepper. Ah, you do mean spice. Yep, and squeeze a lemon. And then let's go ahead and our dressing is vegetable stock. Oh, I've never heard that before. A little white wine and the white balsamic vinegar. And I mean, you can get white or dark balsamic vinegar. I just thought it would be nice to do something a little different. M most stores will always have the dark. And it's got such a good flavor to it. But honestly, it could be tarragon vinegar. It could be anything. You know, it doesn't matter. And that dressing basically is made. So what we're going to do is toss our lettuce. And I think I hear the rabbit calling from the oven. So we are going to head over there in just a second. Well, that's Let's so easy. And, and, you, and it's fresh and light. Look at that. You know, and if you did want to be more conservative, you could put your dressing on the side if you right. didn't like a whole lot of dressing. But you didn't put any. There was no oil or anything in none. that, though, right? None. There's virtually no fat in that at all. And it's so tasty. I'm going to tell you, we'll try this a little bit later. And it is absolutely delicious. And look at that. Nice, clean. Everything stays the way it should. All right, so let's move that on the side. Okay. Let us go and find, let me drop this in the sink as we go. And what we're going to do is get out our rabbit. Pull our rabbit out of the hat. And we are pulling the rabbit out of the hat. Hey, that was very good. And it is quite hot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how pretty. It looks so good. That is exactly what we want. And if you'll grab me that big green plate. All right, obviously, though, nobody's going to remember everything we did today. If you're interested in any of the recipes you see on today's show, visit our webpage at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat or go to our Facebook page, MPB Fit to Eat. All right, so we're going to take and put our pasta on the plate just like you would any Italian dish. 
And I tell you what, I don't want to miss any of that. I'm going to... Let's turn that around. Look at how good that is. Mm. It smells Yummy. so delicious. I know, huh? I can smell every bit of that. All right, then we're going to set our rabbit right to the side. Let me grab that because I know that pan is a very hot. Now, I know this is a cacciatore, so they caught the dinner, but could you use chicken? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And I tell you what, would you go clip me a piece of rosemary? Yep. Since we put some fresh rosemary in here, I think it'll be the perfect little garnish coming out of our own garden. All right, let's set these over to the side. Is that big enough? That is perfect, because it's going to go right in the middle of those two rabbit quarter sections. Then we're going to set the salad on this side so it's away from everything hot. And I tell you what, that's an incredible meal. That's a very beautiful meal. It's a pretty meal. It's nice and healthy. Let's clean that plate over here on the side because I just love it when it looks so good and tastes so good. You got two servings mm. of vegetables there. Isn't it great? Yeah. And you can cook. I can cook. You proved it today. <laughs> I swear. I mean, that is absolutely, and this to me is what doing healthy dining is all about. It looks good and it's going to taste great. And it was easy. Absolutely. I mean, nothing difficult. Everybody out there could do it. So it's a rabbit cacciatore with a vegetable pasta and a nice light balsamic salad. It's a great way to take a, a traditional Italian food to the next level in terms of healthy eating. Absolutely. Think outside that pasta box. I know. Well, you know, I got to thank you. It is always a pleasure. I want to thank Rebecca Turner for helping me out today. And I am your host, Rob Stinson. Eat well.